welcome everybody to uh, our second Tuesday Talks of 2022. We're hosting these a little more sparingly. Um, we are uh, uh, trying to get a couple more in the rotation per month. So be on the lookout. Uh, we actually will have one all about showcasing in two weeks from now on the 22nd. So uh, if you know artists who are submitting to showcase, if you're new, if you are not new, um, we will have a, a presenter, uh, Janet Herman Barlow, an agent, Tammy Walkup, and a past showcasing artist, Dr. E, uh, also known as Dr. Elaine Richardson, um, who will discuss uh, all aspects of, of showcasing. So give you tips on how to submit a great showcase, what it's like being on stage, um, performing a 15 minute showcase and, and everything in between. So tune in and register for that. You'll find that at oepn.org. Um, but Today, we have Matt Fox, uh, who's going to be talking all about Make Music Day. I attended a webinar that he hosted uh, about a week or two ago, and he was gracious enough to join us so that we could get this in front of you guys and then share it onto our YouTube channel uh, for other folks that couldn't join us live today. So um, without further ado, I will pass the baton over to Matt, and I am going to give you the power to be a host. All right. Power's in your hands, Matt. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, well, cool. Well, thank you, Jessica. I appreciate you having uh, our organization here to talk a little bit about Make Music Day. Um, so again, my name is Matt Fox. I'm the deputy director of Make Music Alliance, and we are essentially a national nonprofit resource base for communities that organize Make Music Day. So I'll start out with just explaining what on earth Make Music Day is, because um, I'm sure some of you, some of you might be familiar, um, some of y'all might actually be in Make Music Day towns already, um, some, you know, so just start from square one. So 40 years ago, as of this year, in France, they created a concept called Fête de la Musique, and the whole concept was on June 21st, the longest day of the year, that everybody in the community would go out and make music throughout the day, no matter their age, race, geographical location, background, or even musical ability. So no matter who you are, where you are, you're getting out on that sunny day and just celebrating your community through music making. So fast forward to today, 40 years later, it's a national holiday in France. People get the day off work. 70% of the population participates or spectates. It's just like an actual like national holiday. So while it's not really ever, I don't think, going to be a national holiday in the United States, I don't think we'll get off work for making music in this country, but it has been growing a lot here in the States in the past 10 or so years. So we at the Make Music Alliance personally work with over 100 cities in America that produce this, ranging from your New Yorks, your LAs, your Chicagos, all the way down to the 300 person town of Barron, Wisconsin. So it's very scalable in regards to the size of town, the scope of area. And so McMusic Day still happens on June 21st every year, which is summer solstice. And there's kind of a twofold element to what Make Music Day looks like within a community. So the first thing you're gonna see are bands playing all over the place. So no, you know, anyone can be a performer, anywhere can be a venue. So whether it's a sidewalk, a floral shop, a synagogue, a prison, a park, anywhere counts. And the whole goal is to essentially just be out and everywhere you are, music is being made. No matter if it's a you know robust, you know, the best local band in town, or if it's a five-year-old with a tin can who just wanted to like sing nursery rhymes or something, everything counts. So that's one side is kind of just these free performances happening all over a community. Then the other side, which if you look us up, you might see more of this or what we call our our play-alongs, our jam-alongs, kind of these group uh, gatherings of performances. So this is where you'll see things like a group guitar jam, a 100-person harmonica lesson and play-along, drum circles, group sings, these kind of things that are built to be in places where we, you kind of catch people where they are and get them involved in music making when they might not have you know, been thinking that they would get involved in something like that on that given day. So the whole goal really is to kind of bring down those perceived and physical barriers to music making and to celebrate community with music as the medium. And also essentially offering up this concept to the community and leaving it to community members, organizations, partners, et cetera, to self-dictate what they want the event 
to look like in their respective area. So for example, the floral shop would say, I want to book 12 hip hop bands throughout the evening. And they just go and do that. And that becomes part of Make Music Day. So there's not necessarily a central hub that's curating everything, but there usually is a central hub that's wrangling all of this stuff together to then push out to the public as a unified message. So it's kind of a DIY festival that the city curates itself which is interesting because unlike most festivals, you know, this is going to be decentralized. There's no headline location. There's no headline band by design. Um, everybody has the opportunity to be a performer, to be a hosting location, no matter where they are or what they're doing. And I think that makes it unique because then it essentially provides an event that's truly reflective of a community because it's the community itself that really dictates what they want to see out of the event. And as long as it's on June 21st involves music and is free to the public to access, then it counts. So in a community, there's always going to be, you know, whether it's an individual, a group of individuals, a for-profit, a non-profit, the city government, whomever, there's someone at the center of this thing gathering all that information and saying, hey, give us your information. Let's see what's going on. And then they push out, hey, it's make music, you know, Nashville. Here's all the events that are happening in the community. Go check them out. So what we do at the national level is I essentially provide resources to whoever that city lead is within a community. And then the city lead in that community is the one doing the outreach to the public to get them involved. And we have different tools, and we can talk about it later, but we have different tools to allow, to make it easy on the city organizer to get the community in the loop. Um, so before we go any further, I uh, just want to see if anybody has any questions about the concept itself, because it is kind of a lengthy elevator. I call it the 200 floor elevator pitch because it takes a while to get to the end of it. Um, and it's very, you know, it is unlike most festivals and things. So yeah, I guess first off, does anybody have any questions about what it is? Go. Oh, awesome. Um, so now, so I'll say out loud the cities that currently have make music days in Ohio. Uh, so we have Cincinnati, we have Toledo, we have Avon Lake, which is right outside of Cleveland, and then we have Dark County, which is the county uh, for Greenville. Oh, we got DWs here getting excited about Greenville. Yeah. Are you so DW, I guess real quick, just to ask you, are you are you involved with the make music day there currently? Yes. Cool. Hey, good afternoon. Sorry. Um, yes, I'm actually involved. So we actually use, I think we had three locations last year that we use. So um, trying to get out the date, you know, we spent the first uh, week of everybody saying, why are you having it on a Monday? You should have it on a Friday or a Saturday. So we put out that fire first and then explaining in details why we're having this um, event on this day explaining the history about it. And then we had very good feedback and uh, uh, some very talented artists and then some brand new artists that have played for the first time and now are playing on a regular basis around town, so. Nice, that's awesome, that's what we love to hear. And I think, and sorry, what was your name? My name is David. David, perfect. Yep. So, um, so kind of like David said, and this is something that I think is worth bringing up right now is I keep talking, when I talk about Make Music Day, I say like on every street corner, every single person's involved. Obviously, that's not how a first, third, fourth year works. So it's a scalable thing where Dark County is a good example. They produced three locations, which is a totally normal amount to start with in a first year. And then you kind of build from there. So I know sometimes I talk to people that I've been done this and they're like, I can't put on 200 concerts on a day. And we're like, oh, no, 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 that's, that's, that's down the road. So I think it is kind of taking it realistically. And it is kind of working through creating some events, but then also showing to the public hey, here's an example of what you could do. Now you go run with it and do what you want to do with it. Um, but I think, like David said, it's really interesting because it does kind of provide a platform that some people haven't had the opportunity to utilize, which then can kind of make them into this lifelong performer, which is really interesting. Um, so, so we have those four Ohio chapters. We're looking to grow in Ohio, obviously. So um, I will be interested to hear a little bit later where all y'all are located. Um, and... So I can talk a little bit about what we are. So we are a resource base that is not required to join to produce Make Music Day because Make Music Day 
at its core is just a holiday. You know, we view it like Halloween. You know, on this random day, people put on masks, they ask candy from strangers. For some reason, that's culturally embedded within us, and we like it. Uh, we kind of view Make Music Day the same way. Like, on this day, we hope, you know, in the future that everybody just goes, oh, it's that day where we have to go out and play instruments with each other. Um, so, you know, there's obviously no Halloween council that tells people how to do Halloween. We feel the same way about Make Music Day. There's no actual person that owns this concept. Um, but we do think with the resources we have, if you are trying to produce this in your city, that the resources are uh, pretty uh, necessary to help make this thing uh, get off the ground. So not to bury the lead, we are a dues-based organization, um, but it is only $325 a year for nonprofits and $390 a year for for-profits. And after I talk about what we offer, I mean, you kind of make your money back immediately um, on those dues. So say you're hearing this and you go, cool, I want to start to make music day. What on earth is Matt and his team going to give me to help make this possible? So we kind of start out the gate. The resources we initially provide are things like a website. There's a WordPress template that's already built out to kind of cater to the make music day format. Uh, we make you a logo. We make you an email, you know, where it'd be, you know, like dark county at makemusicday.org. Um, so we give you all those assets. And I'll say out like immediately, it's not required to use them. We just like to give everybody the same um, kind of foundation to begin on. So, you know, you can make your own logo, you can make your own website. It doesn't matter to us. We just like to make sure everybody kind of gets started off in the same way. Um, a big piece of the puzzle that we offer to our chapters, which I think is where this whole like, how on earth do I do this becomes more reasonable is we've actually designed a matchmaking software that we license out to our cities to connect artists and venues. So imagine sort of a kind of like a dating app for concerts where, you know, say you make music Dark County. They say, hey, make music Dark County is happening. Go to this website and sign up. Someone goes on that website. There's just two buttons. It says, are you a venue or are you a performer? Or are you a hosting location or are you a performing artist? You click what you are, you put your availability down, what you, you know, your genre, what you're looking for, whether or not you need electricity. And then from there, the artists in the venues then communicate and can request performances from one another, which slowly kind of builds out an organic schedule of events. And the city organizer, all they had to do was point people to that portal to get to it and register. And then once people have signed up and they have all those uh, you know, performances confirmed, it then turns into an interactive Google map that you can then embed on your website. So then suddenly you have a map of your city with like the seven or eight coordinates of locations, people click on them, it shows the list of performances happening there. So it becomes a very intuitive system that you really have minimal, um, you know, you don't have to really sit in it every day. It's more of just pointing people to it. And on the marketing side, you know, all those people then have agreed to verbiage. You can export all their data out as Excel files to then use for email marketing or messaging people. Um, um, and then let's see, Chris had a question. That app is just for registered cities. Yes, that is correct. So that is if you become a member of Make Music Day. Essentially, if you join us kind of within the day, we start onboarding you with our marketing tech guy. And he starts setting you up with that WordPress site, the logo, the matchmaking platform, which we call Gemini. Um, so yeah, that is something for, this is all the things that I'm going to be talking about right now are for if you join on with us. Which again, you can say, hey, I hear you, Matt. This is all cool. We're going to make our own Make Music Day and we don't want to join you. And I'll be like, awesome, go for it. Um, still totally okay to do. We just won't be able to provide you these resources. Um, the thing that tends to turn heads and people get excited about is members also get actual physical instruments from us to distribute out to their community. So a big piece of what we're doing at the national level is um, working alongside the NAM, NAM Association and the NAM Foundation, which is the North American Music Merchants. It's kind of the big trade organization for music stores and music manufacturers. So there we're lobbying national deals to get our chapters, physical instruments to then distribute. So what does that look like? Uh, for example, we partner with Honer Harmonicas every year. Each chapter with us gets 100 metal blues band Honer Harmonicas that we just ship to you around May. And then you get to distribute out to the public however you deem appropriate. Um, you know, we work with groups like Vic Firth for drumsticks. We work with Alfred for ukulele books. Um, Cassie, we, we gave out 40 Casio keyboards to 40 of our cities last year, like professional size keyboards that they were able to keep. Um, rhythm band instruments who do boom whackers, if any of y'all are familiar with those, um, which is, yeah, if you work in early education, you have to know, that's kind of the, yeah. the mark of whether or not you know what a boom whacker is, is if you work with kids jams. Um, so yeah, we essentially have like 
anywhere from five to 20 partnerships every year at the national level where all of our chapter members have access to a lot of instrument inventory that they can then distribute out to the public for the public to keep, or they can distribute it out, activate it, and bring it back into their fold and utilize in future years. Like for example, boom whackers. It's uh, they're big, they're big plastic pitched tubes. So essentially, it's different tubes for different notes. So you can pass out 500 of these things, hold up a little red sign. Everybody that has red hits it. It's a C note, and then you can kind of make music from there. So a good example of something that you could activate. Everybody has fun with them. Then you take them back and clean them and use them again next year. So it's kind of an interesting way to start building out this inventory of different instruments. So. That's something that some some people join us solely to get those instruments, which is kind of where I say you make your money back immediately because it tends to be more product than $325 worth if you utilize it. Um, so that's a, one of the things that we do. Um, we have a national PR firm. So things get thrown into a national PR cycle where you wind up on, you know, things like Rolling Stone and AP and stuff like that. Um, but our PR firm also works at the regional and local levels. So you know, especially in a state like Ohio, where I'm working a little bit harder to try and get more cities involved. The more cities we have in Ohio, the more we work at the state level to lobby for coverage for statewide partnerships and things like that. And I mean, how that's looked in other states is, you know, Connecticut, we wound up with 16 chapters in Connecticut. So the State Department started giving us micro granting in all of our cities in Connecticut now get $750 a year to produce Make Music Day. So it's like one of those things where when we get the kind of momentum behind us, or like in Wisconsin, Wisconsin Public Radio um, gives a free media sponsorship to every Wisconsin chapter. So it's things like that. Where once we start getting more Ohio people, we can start sitting down together and going, okay, Ohio, like, what are we doing? Like, who are the people at the state level we really need to target? Um, and then, you know, we also offer a member resource database. So these are things like press release templates, my old proclamation templates, hundreds of Getty approved images of Make Music Days across the country, you know, things that Essentially, so once you start, I would then reach out to you and go, hey, city, here's a press release template. Just put your name in the blank. Here's the mayoral proclamation template. Let's reach out to your mayor tomorrow and let's sit down with them and start working you through all of those pieces. Um, you know, there's like timeline examples, budget examples, things like that of how, how cities have handled it in the past. So, you know, 100 cities before you have done this, we don't need to reinvent the wheel in 101st time. So we save all of that stuff. We're very collaborative with our cities. Um, we're in constant communication with all of our chapters. So, and I think that that's the most important part of this is, you know, all of our chapters get together once a month and communicate, share ideas. At the state level, we tend to have statewide meetups kind of like this, where we talk specifically about state level things. And then you have myself and our kind of three other staffers on call to talk through any Make Music Day thing at any given time. So, you know, for example, I'm around to meet with the board of directors or talk to those five organizations in town who are interested in getting involved. Um, my background in this is I used to live in Nashville, Tennessee and ran Make Music Nashville for six years and um, turned that from a team of four volunteers to a 501c3 with part-time staffing. So definitely have like been through the ringer on this system. Um, I've, I learned what did work and I learned what definitely didn't work, which I think can be just as helpful. So I'm kind of here to kind of talk through everything with you guys as you go along. So that's kind of the alliance in a nutshell in what we do um let's see amber oh, of course yeah absolutely thank you for thank you for attending um glad to see you um but yeah so i guess i would be interested to hear from y'all um and i don't know if there's really an organized way of going about this but just kind of like where who y'all are in your respective communities and you know kind of what brought you to be interested in um learning more about this concept and if you yeah if you just have any questions about kind of what the alliance is and what the concept uh, means kind of on a practical level. Yeah, I'll kick it off um, because I'm super excited about this and I was really excited the first time I, I heard the webinar. So, you know, coming from OAPN, we want to figure out how to um, connect this, especially with your Toledo Make Music Day. Um, that's where our conference will be hosted this year. Yeah. So uh, definitely want to talk to you more about that. And then because I'm based in Cleveland, we have a lot of Cleveland resources. We have a great new mayor, um, you know, love to connect with some other groups that I think might be able to, to take this into their own hands and then get the ball rolling. Um, but I, but I would like to connect you with that, with that group. Yeah. Too. And, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. 
I was going to say, yeah, we've actually, so Cleveland has been a chapter in the past and it was actually out of the Cleveland symphony, uh, was the organizer wow. of it. Um, okay. and it just kind of, sometimes this will happen too, or like you run into a thing where like the person organizing it kind of runs out of capacity to be able to handle doing it again. And then it kind of, they were like, Oh, we'll find someone else. And then it kind of falls to the wayside. So yeah, I mean, Cleveland has history and really good history. Um, yeah. And actually the former Make Music Pittsburgh organizers wound up in Cleveland since, so she's around to okay. you know, provide insight. So yeah, we could definitely, um, I'd love to talk to you about Cleveland because I think we could really bring it back. And I know the people that were organizing at Cleveland Symphony would be down to be involved, maybe not at the city lead role, but I know that they're interested in still continuing Make Music Day stuff in the city. Great. Well, yeah, we can further that conversation after this for sure, because there's even new nonprofits that have sprouted up here and, and there's a um, focus on busking and, and bringing the, oh, the great. scene up. So yeah, a lot and of, this is, lot yeah, of this is, this is it. Yeah. This is a great, yeah. great spot to yeah, have that conversation. Yeah. So I will, um, I'm just going to pass it along to everybody. Well, Chris, you have your hand up, so we'll start with you first. And then um, if you just want to call out the next person yeah, to, uh, totally. to introduce themselves. Awesome. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for uh, information. This is really great. I actually came onto this because I was thinking about one of my artists specifically for this who might want to get this started where they live. Um, but as you've been talking, I've been thinking about um, uh, several organizations we work with who might want to get this started in their city. So super excited about that. And so <clears throat> that's what I was going to ask is the, Jessica just posted your website in the chat. So all of the information um, and what's in the toolkit, et cetera, all of that is on the website that I could send that out to either artists or <clears throat> some of our presenters that we work with. Yes, absolutely. So I'm also sending in the chat and I can also, uh, and I can get with Jessica and we can distribute this out via email as well. But that, so I just put up a PDF that I think is a really good way of capturing Make Music Day when you're talking to other people about it. Um, Cause yeah, I threw like 40 concepts at y'all throughout this talk already. So it's like, that's a good way to be like, Hey, here's it at the global level, national, local levels. And yeah, if you go to our website and just click on, um, I believe it's just, there's a section on the about that says make music Alliance. There's actually just bulleted uh, itemized list of what joining us gets you. Okay. And then from there, you know, you can go on there and look at the city list of who's an active chapter and things like that. Cause especially like you're saying, if you're sending it out to other people, you know, having them look first and see like, hey, do you have a Make Music Day? If so, you know, one, I mean, I'm more than happy to introduce anybody to anyone when it comes to that type of stuff too, where you're like, oh, like we actually just Chicago, someone reached out and said, oh, one of our old board members just moved to Atlanta. They want to start a chapter. And I was like, actually, we're working with a group that's already about to start it and then introduce them together. So right. kind of a more the merrier scenario in that regard, for sure. So artists can just go right to that and check and see if there if there's a chapter in the city where they live and then they can just connect through the app. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. I really love this concept. And I, you know, and uh, I think with that, you know, if you, you can play case by case, however you think, but like, say you see like someone in Cincinnati, like you can either reach out to them or you can reach out to me and say like, Hey, can you intro me to the Cincinnati people? I'm more than happy to make that introduction on your behalf. Um, you know, because sometimes that just speeds things up. Um, awesome. but yeah, just Great. keep me, yeah, keep me in the loop. Otherwise I'm more than happy to reach out to anyone. Awesome. About anything. <laughs> Thanks Matt. Yeah. Let's see. And then where were you, where are you based, Chris? Nope. My computer just decided to notify me about something and then it wouldn't let me on here. No worries. Um, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Oh, if you could, I would love to get Richmond involved too. Um, yeah. I've, I've got a couple of uh, orgs in mind. I think might be a good fit for you. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for, thanks for hopping on. Um, yeah. So on my side, Peg is the next person. Hi, um, Peg McDonald with Strady Center for the Arts in Defiance, Ohio. Uh, we're a rural area, Northwest Ohio, about 17,000 population. Um, just came on to see what this was all about. We do have a local um, busker fest that they do a couple days weekend in July and everyone just brings their talent downtown and finds a spot on the main street and they perform and and things like that so I don't know if this is something that would um, people would be interested just an extension of that or yeah so I think 
something worth noting here is that actually Miami, uh, the Make Music Miami organizers, they actually run a busker fest in Miami as well. So it's kind of, they do kind of treat it that way of like kind of there's twofold element of, you know, they share a lot of commonality, but there are some differences in how they operate. So they kind of do it that way where they're like, okay, our spirit of our, you know, what we do is all about these kind of, you know, busking-esque things but each of these two different events look a little bit different. So yeah, I think that would be a really interesting conversation to have with them, especially because if it is um, in July, it could be an interesting, the Make Music Day itself could be an interesting kind of like feeding into the Busker Fest, you know, almost like a kind of a promotional angle in kind of making them kind of communicate with one another. So yeah, I think that'd be really interesting. Oh, let's see, Bernie, let's see. So Bernie, let's see, my email is mad at makemusicday.org and I'm putting it in there. My cell phone is also right there. Um, yeah, shoot me an email. Uh, Bernie, where are you located? If you're able to speak. Um, I'm in Los Angeles. I actually just did an event uh, in Columbus over the weekend and met some of the folks that are on the call. And uh, just kind of, when I heard about uh, the call concept and the make music day concept i thought i would pop in so cool yeah, absolutely we have a lot of la county chapters um so mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah whether it's columbus or la um yeah would love to connect with you and talk about that so cool thanks yeah absolutely take care um, everyone Cool. So yeah, Peg, I mean, Defiance, like that's my favorite type of size city for make music day. Cause I think it's the type of community where it has enough, you know, uh, kind of companies and infrastructure to really kind of latch on to folks quick, but you can really kind of make a big impact, uh, with getting a few of those key partners on, you know, like libraries, parks, like these types of people that you can kind of have one conversation and then mobilize multiple locations. I think that that's a really uh, cool opportunity. Um, Oh, Chris, well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, she's right gone, but um, cool. So let's move on to Jessica, who's not in Hawaii. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, so I'm Jessica and I run the Amazing Giants. And usually my assistant Savannah's on these calls. So I thought I would pop in today because like I said, it, the topic interested me and um, I'm more along the lines organizing performers and events um, per client requests and communities and stuff like that. So I'm not sure this is applicable for me, but um, yeah, we're based out of Columbus. I don't know if you guys do have a Columbus chapter. We don't, okay. um, but we have talked to folks in Columbus about it. You know, it's, it's one of those, yeah, it's kind of, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are interested and we're just trying to find like, because a lot of times you'll see that of like mm -hmm. seven or eight organizations will go, cool, we don't want to take lead, but we will do something when the lead shows up. Right. And it's a matter of finding that one person who says like, okay, I'll do it. And then mm -hmm. suddenly like all the institutions just take it on. So yeah. um, I feel like Columbus kind of falls into that a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, I'd love to yeah figure out what might make sense for finding a group. Yeah. And, and just note too, Jess, we uh, have a handful of members that are presenters in Columbus. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in furthering the discussion, I can connect okay. you and loop you in with a couple, you know, Rich from, from Kappa and, and a couple other folks. So maybe okay. there's a presenter in the area or somebody that's connected to an organization or a nonprofit mm -hmm. that wants to take the lead. So, okay. And so probably not going to be the talent right for now. it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah, and some, sometimes what we'll find too, and I, I found actually, this is one of my favorite types of Make Music Day organizer structure is when you have, you know, three or four, community organizations that all say out loud like we want to see this happen how do we do that and kind of almost like sitting down with everybody and I hate to say the word committee because I think death by committee is a very real thing uh but you know sitting down with the group and saying like hey let's divvy up some responsibilities as these four orgs and if each of these organizations will put on one thing we have all our anchor concepts secured and then we can just do outreach otherwise so I think that there might be worth having that type of conversation too um because sometimes that winds up happening where no one wants to take full lead, but four different groups will all take on a tiny piece. And it's not a whole lot of logistical strain sometimes. You know, if if you're doing Make Music Day where you're feeding off community curation, you know, it is really just a lot of outreach to the right people and then letting people run their own things. So I think that it could be an interesting conversation for sure. Um, but thank you. Uh, Christine. 
Hi, I'm an agent um, in New York City. Um, Chris took all my questions, so uh, she, she already answered, you already answered everything. Um, we represent artists um, all over the country and uh, worldwide as well. So I uh, just wanted to come in informationally and hear what you are doing, because um, a lot of times we get presenters that call us and ask for talent. And, you know, um, you know, like we represent Drumline in Atlanta, and I know that they do a lot of community based um, projects. So, you know, um, this was very informational and, and thank you so much. So I'm going to pass it over to um, venues that we deal with and our artists as well. So thank you. Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. Can I ask one more question too, Matt? Um, do you uh, do you know if any cities offer stipends or pay for the artist or is this an all volunteer yeah, so it it's very case by case. So one thing that we do offer at the national level um, when it comes to compensation is we work closely with the uh, AFM, uh, the Musicians Union, and specifically their Music Performers Trust Fund, which is called the MPTF. Essentially, that is a um, kind of pool of money that can be allocated to performers producing um, participatory events. So... First and foremost, joining us, you kind of get access to that funding, um, which is based specifically on your local chapter's willingness to do paperwork. So, you know, we see we see some union, some local union chapters go like, cool, all of our MPTF fundings for Make Music Day, we'll do it all. And some are like, I don't want to do any of this. So it's like, it's very much based on like each local chapter's um, enthusiasm. Because, you know, some of our organizers are, a cool by just, um, a lot of our local organizers, um, or a few of them are actual local AFM chapters themselves. Like the head of the New Mexico AFM runs Albuquerque. So it's, you know, there's kind of a lot of stuff with that. But in regards to the rest of it, um, it depends. Some places will have um, some compensation structures available. Some will have some granting things available. Now, I will say sometimes that get you get into a kind of hairy situation if you're funding some things and not other things because then it becomes a game of what do you value in your community um so then because you know it's an interesting event in that it is for musicians but it's also for non-musicians by christine um so i think that that's kind of an interesting um angle that i like to make sure chapters understand early on is that this is for people who play music. This is also for people who don't play music. So it's not necessarily a gigging opportunity in the way of, you know, you're not reaching out to a band and going, I need you to play at three o'clock for 90 minutes. This is now a transaction kind of thing. Um, so in Nashville, we always had a rule of thumb that we paid 100% of our leaders of events. Like the people that we hired to teach things, to lead jams, Essentially, if we walked up to someone and said, can you do this for us, we then would compensate them. Um, so we actually went into and we did a lot of granting to make that happen. Um, but we, we made a pretty clear line between that and the portal where anybody can sign up. So because I think that's an element of when people start organizing, you know, one of the first things you'll hear is like some say some random artist in town, some blues trio says, hey, we can't do this unless we're paid. At which the answer is, oh, cool. Okay, well, this is like this is something where like people just can opt in to play or not. It's totally cool that that's required, you know, for you to do that. Like we're not going to pressure you to try and do this. Um, so it just depends. And I know in Nashville, and this happens sometimes too. We ran into situations where we'd have a hosting venue who says, "Hey, we pay hundred percent of people that walk through our door, so we have a budget set aside for people that are going to play at this venue." To which we were like, "Cool, that rules. Like that's really nice of you." But then we also had to make sure that we never gave them preferential you know we we weren't essentially able to go like hey heads up community one of our 70 venues is paying out good money go hit them up you know because then it's like then it becomes yeah it becomes a the, the whole point of the events like gathering community together and music just happens to be the medium that we've chosen to celebrate your community to celebrate your neighborhood so it's a long sprawling messy answer but yeah, I mean, essentially that's that, um, where I think the clear thing is it's an open door. So it's not, you're not necessarily asking people to play. It's like kind of a, you want to step to this door and play music with us on this day? Totally your call, no pressure. Um, but there is funding available. And like I said, like I always felt in my gut, like if I walk up to someone and ask them to do something for me, something is owed to them. Um, you know, whether it's an honorarium, whether it's union scale pay, 
just whatever's feasible. I mean, because I do think, I do think, especially in these scenarios, like the honorarium is, I mean, it, it does go a long way. It goes a much longer way than exposure dollars, which can't buy hot dogs. Um, but yeah, so I think that that's, yeah, because there's a few questions like that. And then like David said, you know, like things like, why is this on a Tuesday? Why is it not on a Saturday? Um, and I think those can be pretty easily um, discussed when it, when it comes to like, you know, bringing up the national participatory element of this, like that you're a part of a much larger thing. Um, and I do think too, this event's all about access. So I think that it's, you know, weekend versus weekday, you do have to reframe how you're approaching your community, but it's just a matter of using the flexibility of this concept to recognize like, okay, weekday, traditional work week, where's the lunch, where's the lunch crowd go? Like, where are those restaurants that everybody goes to? Everybody's off work now, where are they headed? Um, especially in summertime on a weekday, summer camps become available to you, which are not available to you on the weekends. So then it's kind of, okay, well, what's that boys and girls club doing for the summer camp for all the kids this year? It's a Tuesday this time. Let's offer them a cool musical activity and put on something at the summer camp. So I think it's one of those things, if it's just a matter of reframing um, how you approach it. And I will say in Nashville, at least, our weekday ones went better than our weekend ones, honestly. Um, because we were able to more accurately predict where people were sitting <laughs> at any given moment. Yeah. Because then, you know, you reach out to the local business of like, hey, random corporation in town, like do something fun with your employees on this day and like do an activation outside, like in the front of the plaza or whatever. Um, so it's just it's just a game of figuring out where folks are, I think a lot of the time. Um, but yeah. David, you hosted one. Will you talk about your experience with it of, you know, yeah. how you got started and what your first steps were and what it looked like. Absolutely. I think uh, Andrea Jordan, our executive director for Dark County Center of the Arts, I think she re, uh, received the initial email and then we talked about it. It was something that uh, we decided to go forward with. Um, based on that, um, yeah, everything went very well. So we use the website. We use everything that was provided to us and um, it's worked very well for having people sign up. Uh, the one thing that we did pay, we actually paid if we could use your PA system. So uh, it was some, it was very nice for us at the different venues to have an actual PA for everybody to use. We had quite the variety from, you know, cello to a flautist to vocals, to a rapper, to guitar. To, we had a little bit of everything. And just to make sure it was um, heard, you know, by all, but we had great attendance too. So it was a good crowd and a couple locations. We're going to add a third one, another one this year in our town. Um, but yeah, trying to get, you know, the other small towns in the area uh, active with it. So it works out well. Awesome. Everything that Matt, everything that Matt said, it's, it's very, it just all came together and you don't worry, Peg, you won't worry about scheduling anything. It just happens. Yeah, People that's... sign people sign up how long did you have uh each artist perform how long did they um you know we kind of maybe capped it at, most of them were some did one song uh some did 15 minutes um you know I, I had a lady that came in from out of state to perform with her grandson and then she kept waiting for somebody that wasn't going to be very good to follow and so she was like, well, I'll wait, I'll go next. I'll go next. I'll go. Finally, there was this young kid with a guitar and she thought, well, I'll just follow him because he surely, he looks very nervous and he's like 12 years old. Well, he came up and blew the house away. So he was the big star of the show. So it was kind of funny how everything works, but um, you know, it's just still, um, it's just great to see that just a wide variety of artists, people, different, different things. We had a drum circle. So we kind of had everything covered. It worked out really well. And the products that we got last year was Vic Firth. Uh, we did the flower pot um, okay. uh, selection. So um, I we had four. I'm a I'm a drummer, so we had four hundred dollars in mallets, easy. So it was very nice, great yeah, gift. The, the mallets did were a just, nice touch last year. That was right. Yeah. Did you just provide the location? Like, did you use your venue at all, or? No, we used the library. We used a park downtown. We used a restaurant that we have downtown for indoor. Uh, so we just tried to find, yeah, same like what Matt said, where people are. Um, our library does a lot of children's events in the summer, so it made sense to have it there during the week on the library lawn. And so there, we had quite a few people. Just various times we had, we offered an evening setting in the park and then two lunch settings. So it worked out and you could just sign up for what? And you were on the list and 
um, basically you showed up and I kind of let, you know, you can do what you want to do. David, did you need permits at all for the city settings to, for the shows? No, no, we didn't because our park, we're allowed to in the park, the libraries privately owned, they did their own thing and restaurants. So no, we didn't, I don't think there was any permits to get. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I think I, the permitting thing, it, it's of course case by case, depending upon the city. But I think lots of times, like for example, you go to the parks department and you say, hey, parks, can we utilize a portion of this park for this? And I know in Nashville, they essentially said, yes, just make sure it's acoustic only and that you don't obstruct sidewalks. As long as you achieve those two things, we don't have to get into any weeds on permitting and we'll just not charge you to put on your event. Um, right. So I think it was that kind of thing of, you know, that's what I think, that's where I think Make Music Day really shines when it comes to that type of stuff is if someone says, hey, you can't do that without getting a permit, then you're like, cool, we just won't do that. Like, we'll make it acoustic. Done. Right. Like, okay, cool. Well, then we're all good. So, um, and I think too, when it comes to, you know, especially when, it, like you're saying with the private businesses, like usually private, like private businesses tend to have their own, you know, their own rights to do their own things on their own sites. So, you know, permitting, insurance, all that type of stuff, all usually falls within the fold of what that organization's doing. Oh. Um, and then Peg, just so you know, like if people are utilizing our uh, matchmaking website as they sign up, they're actually agreeing to terms and conditions where they say like, this is my event. I'm just using this thing kind of as an event calendar of sorts. So I know sometimes first year cities will always say like, am I now like liable for 500 things happening in my community? Yeah. And the answer is like, no, absolutely not. Like uh. if you're utilizing the system, you know, working with these partners and asking them to self-produce and have everybody going through that uh, website, the portal, everybody's kind of um, kind of waiving liability on themselves. And it's just saying like, this is my event, I'm producing it, this is my thing. Um, but yeah, so I think with permitting, we, I mean, we do, and all that to say, we do have some cities where permitting is really obstructive, like Chicago. They have to pay like hundreds of dollars per sidewalk activation because that's just how the city works, you know, as opposed to like in Nashville, they gave us like essentially just a free reign of the city on the day. Cause we talked to the city and they're like, you know what, do whatever you want. We don't care. We like you guys and we're just going to let you do it. So it, it, the, the polls range that drastically, but I would say most of the time in smaller communities, it, I've not seen permitting. Becoming. It should, should not be a problem. We actually had a proclamation that was read by the mayor at the courthouse at noon and uh, lo and behold, he gathered the entire city staff to as a choir, and they sang. So I mean, that's it was awesome. all part of it. So it was a lot of fun. Wow, that's great. That's, that's really cool. I would, if you guys have video or photo of that, I would love to see that because we have a couple of the like Laredo, Texas's mayor, like decided to sing it like their proclamation. <laughs> so I like this. I like this element of like, yeah. And I do think um, that is something that's really like the mayoral proclamations, monument lightings, like they're things that don't take a lot of work from our end, but the public sees it and they're like, whoa, like you got that? You know, it's like, it looks like the optics of it really right. help change things. And I think that's the permitting thing too, is, you know, people are like, oh, how do I get the city to really behave with this type of stuff? And it's, it usually boils down to like, get the mayor's office to give you a green light. And then things tend to, and depending upon the town, because sometimes it's not as influential, but I've seen very often, like if the mayor's office and the mayor throw out a proclamation and tell people they like it, all the other departments kind of perk up and go, okay, cool. He said it's cool. You know, they said it's cool. Like, it's fine. Let's move forward. Um, so this is exciting. Yeah. I feel like this is so, you know, I don't technically live in Cleveland. I live in Lakewood, which Lakewood's also great. So I'm going to send this over to the mayor here, but um, Cleveland has a new mayor, Justin Bibb, who's awesome. And our, our downtown, it's just, it's all set up for these live events. So um, I will make sure that you guys are all connected after this mm -hmm. call and this is recorded. So we'll send this out. Um, we'll have it up on YouTube by tomorrow. I'll send this out in an email too, because I really want to hit more of our members with this. And then there's some groups that I'm connected to on social media that I'll make sure that we connect with. And mm -hmm. Matt, I'll stay in touch with you and, and um, I'll make sure that your information is shared and the PDF is, is uploaded when I send this out too. So you guys awesome. didn't download it. And I will say, Peg, since I feel like we're just like, I was talking, just like, Peg, here's how Make Music Day works. Um, I will say too, <laughs> like, just so you know, like timeline wise, like now is like a totally normal time to for cities to join in on Make Music Day. I mean, Honestly, like this week is the first week that even our returning chapters are starting to be like, okay, we should start dusting off the machine and getting things back up again. So now is, you know, because people join us as early, like we had a chapter join us in July of last year for this coming June. Then like 
El Paso, Texas joined on 48 hours before Make Music Day in 2020. So like, mm -hmm. there's no rules to when the right time to join is. But like now is kind of the, like the March, April window tends to be when people get everything together, get their assets organized and then present it to the city and go, hey, Make Music Day's happening here and here's how you get involved. So, yeah. Awesome. Do you guys have any other questions? Nothing else to add. I, I think, you know, the apprehensions that you have to start this, um, you'll look at maybe two weeks before and there'll only be a couple artists signed up, but then all of a sudden everything's full, everybody's in and <laughs> it just happens and it there, turns yeah. out it's a wonderful day. Yeah. There really is a snowball effect that occurs and obviously, you know, musicians in their uh, short windows of planning sometimes, yeah, it's like that two hours prior, two days prior, you're something like, oh, okay, everything filled up. Cool. Great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, and I think it is, it's just a matter of hitting those initial first few partners, right? Like, you know, like the Busker Fest and things like that, like getting with them, utilizing their, you know, communication channels, because they have that credibility, they know the right people, and just making sure people are aware of it. It's really a lot of that is just kind of that visibility outreach. I'm just saying like, this thing exists, you either want to do it or you don't, and here's where you go to do it. And that tends to be, you know, minimal logistical effort on the city organizers part, but tends to kind of get the ball rolling in a real way. Cool. Well, Matt, I can't thank you enough for joining yeah, this great. us yeah. today. And um, always, yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll absolutely be in touch with you. I'll make sure that I direct folks your way. And um, thank you everyone for joining us today for our Tuesday talks. Head to oapn.org for uh, upcoming Tuesday talks and more information. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Have a good rest of the Thanks day. Thanks, Jessica. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Thank Bye. you so much. See you soon, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.